Navigating the boardroom as a manager and getting buy-in from your executive team can be challenging. And it's not just about the meeting and the presentation. It's about strategy and it's about preparation. In this video, I'm going to share with you what you need to do to improve your influence and your impact with your senior team and save you a little bit of time and stress on the way. As a leadership coach, I've guided many of my clients through challenging boardroom situations. And back in the day when I was in the corporate world, I too spent many hours liaising with senior stakeholders. These are proven techniques that I have used myself that really do make a difference. We're gonna tackle three questions about navigating the boardroom, how to get agreement, the strategies to build allies and relationships with those senior stakeholders and a more efficient way of working that will minimize a lot of that pre-meeting legwork. Plus, this is the perfect time to put these skills into action because as I record this, we're just on the tip of going into September. And that window of time, September through December for many organizations, is the critical time for planning next year. Yes, we are already moving on to 2025. You may feel like we've only just got into 2024, but we indeed start planning. So this is a great time to build those relationships up with those senior stakeholders. My name is Helen Bryant. I'm a leadership coach and here on YouTube, I share weekly lessons on how to develop your leadership skills, achieve your career goals and be a brilliant leader. Now, I am just back from four weeks holiday. I've not had a holiday as long as this in a long time and I feel energized and have had a wonderful time. I've spent time with my family. I've been to Spain. I saw Taylor Swift at Wembley. She was amazing. And I am really ready for this window of time, you know, and that back to school feeling, ready to reset. And this energy is actually really important for stakeholder management, for building those relationships with the senior team, because you need energy and you need enthusiasm in order to build relationships. And here's the challenge. When it comes to the board, to the exec team, there is an issue of power recognizing the power they have over the organization and the power they have actually over you and your career means that we can be fearful of building those relationships we put a put distance between them with the power and us and what this can do is make us procrastinate especially if we have perfectionist tendencies and just be nervous about reaching out and and building relationships which we would never be with other people within our organization. So getting your mindset right is really important. And the way to think of it is not as this is the exec, but think of it much more as these are colleagues and you are a proactive problem solver who can help these colleagues achieve their goals. And the more you can think of it that way in a less threatening way, it will enable you to reach out and build those relationships. And once you start doing that, you'll think of these people much more as people rather than the board. And that's the key to building relationships with an executive team is being really proactive and getting to know what their needs are. So mindset really matters. Now, when we think about the interaction that many managers have with the board or the exec, it's often in a formal setting of a meeting, in an exec meeting. And this is what I often see. There is normally a templated presentation which is sent out as a pre-read first. Now this templated presentation, you spend a lot of time filling that in and developing it and a lot of energy goes on getting it right. It has to be out, out by set day so that the senior team can read it and be ready for the meeting. And that's the rub, you see. What people do is focus on the presentation. And this presentation is like a straitjacket to a manager who is trying to explain a complex problem because the data is scattered over several pages. You may be able to only write issues on one page and you don't have the freedom to break out and explain the story as you would wish. Add that to the challenge, that pre-read is sent out, but not always read. So therefore, when you come to presenting to a board, this is what often happens. Some people have read it. Some people are really aware of the problem. 
Some people are hearing it, thinking it, and joining in the meeting all at the same time. Some people are just staying completely quiet. And you have to have the confidence to facilitate what could be a very challenging situation to get a decision made or to share key information. And that is hard. It's really hard. And if I had a message, if there are any execs watching this, think about whether you are enabling your managers to actually communicate the challenges of the business in the most effective way. Because often the energy is going on the wrong bit, i.e. the deck. And yeah, that's just a bugbear of mine. The key here is it is not about the presentation. If you want to influence and have impact with your board, Obviously, you have to perform well in those meetings, be able to articulate the issues and facilitate that discussion well. But so much of that is actually in the preparation and the building of those relationships before that meeting. Sometimes that's in the week before when you may have run around, but actually what I'm really gonna encourage you to do is think much more longer term because that is how relationships are made, little by little over a longer period of time. That's how trust is built. That's how topics are better understood and you will understand better the needs of your stakeholders. So you want to be thinking much more long-term and outside meetings for building those relationships up with your key stakeholders. That makes the management of those meetings that much easier to do. In order to do that, you need a system. Many people work in an ad hoc and reactive way to the work that they're actually working on. Oh, got this coming up, must go see so and so. What I want you to do is build a system where you think more long-term, supported by tools and templates that bring that information quickly back front of mind and help you keep on track. I think the perfect window of time for managing senior stakeholders is a quarterly planning process. So a through the quarter, the month and the week. Quarterly planning is critical because that's where you take those long-term strategic plans and translate them into much more implementable plans to work what you and your team are actually working on. So when you do your quarterly planning, you want to be thinking about those stakeholders that are critical to that upcoming work and assessing where is your relationship with them and what you need to talk to them about and when and get it out of your head and into a plan for that quarter. This means, once you've been clear on the quarter, the month is the perfect time when you're doing your monthly planning to look at the month ahead and think, oh, I need to talk to whoever it is and actually get that meeting in their diary. So the month is about translating it into a plan for the month with time that is respectful of your stakeholders' diaries. You know that senior stakeholders are really busy. They've got a lot on their plate. They have a lot of pressure. And as a consequence, their diaries are full. So you need to be standing back and thinking, how can you fit in? And the more time you give yourself, the more that will work. This means when you're doing your weekly planning, you're not thinking about who you need to talk. You are thinking about what you will be talking about. Those meetings are now in. So you're thinking about what will I need to do in order to make that meeting really work for that senior stakeholder and make sure that my objectives are also achieved. This cycle of planning and having a regular system and routine for thinking about and planning working with your stakeholders is a massive enabler to your influence and your impact. It gets you off the back foot and turns you into that proactive problem solver. It will give you much more opportunity to build trust and improve your impact with each and every communication moment. As I mentioned, templates and tools play a critical part in this because you've got a lot on your plate. It helps you get the thinking back front of mind very quickly. Let me talk you through two that are in my manager's toolbox, which is part of my manager's OS course, which I think really help you do this task. The first template is you just need a summary of who everybody is, the people you need to be in contact with to achieve your goals. So you need the person. You need their role and the organization, and then you'd put in their contact details. Now, 
two things that help you think about the effort you need to put in to build the relationship with that person. The first is, do you know them or do you not know them? So I've not met them. I know them a little. I know them well. So anybody who's you've not met them, you might want to think about how you are going to reach out yourself or are you going to ask for an introduction from perhaps somebody who is already a good advocate for you, so an ally. So you think about how do I reach out and build that relationship with them. But that is going to take a lot more effort than somebody you would know well. And as a consequence, you could pretty much rock up to their desk or give them a call and they're absolutely going to listen to you. The second one is the importance to you and the importance of that person to you in achieving your goals. Is it high, medium or low? And again, it helps you work out how much effort you're going to need to put in. Then you're going to think, well, why am I going to contact them? And what do you want to do? Well, again, I want a face-to-face -face meeting with them. And it's also in Q3. So I know when, I know I'm aiming for a face-to-face -face meeting. And then what's the status? Well, at the moment, it's just planned. But your other choices would be in progress. I've established the contact. When it comes to your quarterly planning, another tool you might want to use in thinking through who you're liaising with and making sure that you spend the right amount of time with the right people is recognising that not all stakeholders are created equal. And by that, I mean it's easy sometimes to stay in our comfort zone of people we know and spend time with people who are involved in our project rather than people who may be more removed from it. This matrix breaks it out by power, high, low and interest, high, low. So the top right box, people you would need to manage closely are people that have high power and as a consequence, influence and decision making capability over whatever this piece of work is. Those people need to be managed closely. You need to be putting in a lot of effort to build up the relationship because they have high interest, they're involved with this. They have high power over it. Other people have high power on your exec, but in fact, have much lower interest. And here, you don't want to ignore them, but you need to keep satisfied, being really clear how much effort you need to put in, how much information they need to know. Now, the bottom right, these people are people to watch. So they have high interest, so they often would love to get involved and can be very demanding, but can have relatively low power or, or influence over the ultimate decision. So these are people to keep informed and involved in that way, but not necessarily to be at the same level of relationship building. So you may be able to communicate these people by email or through Teams because you can keep them updated without putting in the same level of face-to-face -face time. And then bottom left, low interest, low power. You just want to keep an ear out for these people to keep monitored. If you break out your stakeholders this way, what you'll get is a much greater sense of priority of who are the important ones and how you could influence and guide them. And as a consequence, therefore, it helps you set up an action plan about what you need to do when. And I would really think about this at least every quarter. Now, a couple of tips that I think can help you in managing these relationships. First, create a concise executive summary about whatever it is that you're talking about. What's the goal of the work? What's the scope of the work? What are the issues that you see? What are the priorities? And importantly, what are the benefits of doing your proposed plan of action? What are they going to give both the individual and the organization? Do not forget about the benefits. Too many plans rely on the action plan and the benefits are often implicit rather than explicit. What it will do is help move you out of the straitjacket of the exec presentation deck to communicate in a more effective way. So this could be a written doc or it could be a PowerPoint deck, depending on really what's the culture of your business to what works best for you. Importantly, when I was talking about building allies and identifying those allies, a couple of things you can do that massively improve your ability to work with that person and build a deeper relationship. And that is when you schedule the first one-to-one -one with them or the start of a piece of work or a project, you want to make sure that you spend time 
understanding what they think. Say you worked in HR and you're looking at your 2025 planning. So you'd go around your senior stakeholders and you would start off by asking, I am looking at the 2025 planning. From your perspective, what would make a great 2025 from an HR and then find out what they say. What issues do they see? What opportunities do they see? What risks do they see? Understand what are their needs and what are their priorities. And the more you know that, it will shape everything that you bring after this because you will be able to match up the mutual benefits that you have between you. And therefore it will go from a general plan to a plan that they feel is really tailored to them. And that is key in this relationship building and trust building that you're trying to do. And as a consequence, key to your influence and impact. A second question to ask when you have that meeting is going forward, what would be the best way for me to update you and communicate with you? Now, some of them are going to say face to face. Some of them are going to say email, whatever they say. The benefit is you know what is their communication preference. That will dictate your communication strategy for your project or your piece of work in how you communicate with your different stakeholders. Again, it's subtle, but it's so powerful in making people think this person really knows me and thinks about me and is good. And that's what you want. As I've mentioned, building allies is absolutely critical to your success in influencing senior stakeholders. This is where I'd go next on this video, the number one influence strategy, to deep dive much more onto the communication skills involved in making each of those meetings work really well for you. I assure you, this is one of the highest impact leadership skills you can develop. So this is where I'd go next. Until next time, take care.